please introduce yourself to everybody, your full okay, name. I'm, uh, my name's Alan Perot. I was a uh, falconer for Arab political leaders for 20 years, and then I spent another 10 years in former Soviet territories uh, doing conservation work and catching falcon smugglers. Excellent. So in our, we crossed paths about a year ago or no, about you know, eight months ago. And, and, and I have always been searching for the reasons as to why and why they wanted everyone to die in Benghazi. And boy, do you have some really good information that explains everything. And, uh, you know, I, I, we appreciate that you're taking the time to share it with us, everyone. So. Thank you. Uh, well, I, I have to say that that our military are so well trained; their work is compartmentalized, and the only people that understand the full story are the people at the top. Uh, and they have made some very bad decisions for this country, and uh, for um, the former Navy SEAL Ty Woods and his brethren who perished unnecessarily uh, at the hands of Hillary Clinton. And uh, uh, in the large picture, this involves Joe Biden and John Brennan. So could you ex explain the context of how all this, how did this all start? Well, the, the, the gestation, the beginning was uh, in the 70s during the Church Commission uh, when an alternate CIA was created called the Safari Club. And the Safari Club was financed by overseas allies. Uh, it was outsourced to foreign banks. I have uh, two banks and bank accounts that were used by the Safari Club and the individuals with checks paid out by them. Osama bin Laden was one of the recipients of funding from this uh, alternate CIA that was uh, subverting the oversight control of the successor to the uh, Church Commission, and that is the Senate Intelligence Committee. Uh, uh, one week before bin Laden was killed, I was called down to the Senate Intelligence Committee to give uh, statements and evidence. And I have uh, quite a few tape recordings and uh, uh, of, of uh, senior members uh, who were aware of bin Laden's house arrest in Iran for 10 years following Tora Bora. This was arranged by John Brennan. This is why Gary Bernson was not allowed to kill um, Osama bin Laden in Tora Bora when he was only a few hundred yards away uh, because the plans had been made and set in stone by John Brennan to uh, extradite uh, bin Laden from Tora Bora to Iran where he remained under house arrest for 10 years with 100, more than 100 Al-Qaeda leaders and their families. So what you're saying is that there was no need for us to invade Afghanistan under the pretext of getting Al-Qaeda if the U.S. government knew and was actually protecting his life in Iran. Is that correct? Well, I have to say it really, it was rogue elements of the U.S. government controlled by uh, John Brennan, Richard Clark, uh, uh, Vice President Biden, quite a, quite a few people. There's a long list of, of people. Uh, they started with good intentions. The Safari Club was begun to, to fight the expansion of the USSR, but it turned into a um, a, a very distorted operation over the years. And uh, Osama bin Laden was the figurehead uh, manifestation of this alternate CIA. And so they had to protect him in their bad judgment. And you see, one lie leads to another. Our parents always taught us this. And so uh, when I, uh, my team, we, we planned a program to go in and get bin Laden in Iran. Uh, we were going to catch him when he was falconry hunting because I spent 20 years living with Arab political leaders, training their falcons and going out in, in these camps, 
hunting with them. And then uh, I noticed there were terrorists coming into these camps. And the Royal Falconry camps are Al-Qaeda's boardroom. This is where these bad guys come. There are no passport or border controls. And and so uh, uh, we, we were going to go in and get bin Laden. But unfortunately, within minutes of ascending to the office of the CIA director, Leon Panetta's first act in office was to cancel the RIGOR program, R-I-G-O-R, -R, a covert CIA program to catch and kill Osama bin Laden in Iran. Uh, this was six months after Barack Obama was sworn in as president and Leon Panetta threw a tantrum and canceled RIGOR. This was reported by Goldman and Apuzo and slightly mischaracterized in the press as targeting al-Qaeda leaders all over the world, but it was focused only on Iran and bin Laden. And so um, uh, when we were first ignored and then obstructed and then threatened by eight CIA officials and warned off going into Iran to get bin Laden, we had passports, visas, uh, everything was ready. The, the Revolutionary Guards were going to be our bodyguards while we were out doing uh, bona fide scientific research as a cover for catching bin Laden alive for delivery to a tri-state area. Uh, when we were shut down by Leon Panetta and others, uh, I began negotiating directly uh, with Iran six scenario analyses for the transfer of bin Laden alive and well to coalition uh, forces and uh, to have him put in a neutral zone um, and Iran is on tape agreeing to this. It was all done. It took three years to develop this. I had meetings in the Iranian mission at the United Nations. Ambassador Mohammed Kazai organized everything. Bak was was the handler. There were several handlers. Everything was ready. And then I went to um, Governor Bill Richardson, New Mexico Governor Bill Richardson, on December 2nd and 3rd of 2010. He agreed to be the U.S. envoy to receive bin Laden for a transfer to coalition custody. And uh, it turned out that bin Laden had already been moved to Abbottabad, Pakistan, in August of 2010. And, uh, um, and so... Why was uh, he transferred there? He was transferred there because in the six scenario analyses that I discussed with Iran by harboring Osama bin Laden and 100 al-Qaeda leaders, this represents an act of war against the United States. Their nuclear facilities could be bombed and their economy obliterated. So the time moves backwards instead of forwards. And the Iranians didn't want to risk exposing their their uh, complicit uh, or, complicity with John Brennan and others to harbor. You see, they, John Brennan and Clinton and Biden outsourced the imprisonment of al-Qaeda leaders to Iran. We think of outsourcing as, as being a commercial activity. They outsourced our military responsibilities to an untrustworthy adversary, Iran. And, and they did that to save Iran from retaliation for harboring uh, terrorists. And so Iran had no choice in their estimation but to accept the offer of Clinton in lieu, oh, in lieu of my, over my offer, which was transferred to a neutral zone, because that would have endangered their economy and their nuclear program. And so they Clinton, forgive me, uh, I, I want to ask you about this. So Clinton actually knew about this, right? You, she knew the, that they were willing to just hand him over to us. Tapes, and, registered letters, everything to Clinton. And, so, and so she knew that they were ready, Iran was ready to give us bin Laden with no real struggle. And absolutely. She, so she decided to have him move to Pakistan for yes. a trophy kill. For they, they moved him to Abbottabad in August of 2010. And uh, that's our first overhead viewings of bin Laden walking in the garden. Everybody said he was crippled, but he walked down three flights of stairs to walk in a garden to advertise his presence, okay? It was an advertisement. Then the gas line was put on the third floor of the Abbottabad complex in August because he, his wives had to stay uh, sequestered away from the other men. They had to cook in private without the porta veil. 
and uh, other things. Uh, Saad bin, one of bin Laden's sons said his father was strangely resigned to dying in Abbottabad. So he was held there in a gilded cage, awaiting his trophy kill. He was moved from Mashhad, Iran, into Abbottabad uh, airport, and then moved to this prison complex, the Abbottabad compound. It was not there to protect him. It was there to keep him there, awaiting his appointment with destiny. But the Iranians turned it into a fateful result because they pulled bin Laden out at the last minute, at the 11th hour, after an Iranian agent, a double agent, a Pakistan ISI officer who worked for Iran covertly, provided the DNA evidence uh, to the CIA station chief, uh, finally, they were convinced it was bin Laden in Abbottabad, and they sent in SEAL Team 6. And uh, Musharraf said he didn't know about the SEAL Team 6 coming in, but they had to let down the radar long enough for the helicopters to come in, and they only told Obama about the uh, SEAL Team 6 kill mission after the radar was put back up and SEAL Team 6 could not go back into uh, Pakistan, Af Afghanistan. It was then a one-way trip that could not be canceled. You see, we have, we have a witness who, who witnessed uh, Hillary and Panetta threatening Obama that if he didn't greenlight the bin Laden kill mission, they would expose him in the press and he would never survive politically. And... He actually was reluctant to authorize the kill mission. That's why they pulled him off the golf course only after the mission could not be canceled. And uh, so the, the Asian provocateurs, the engineers of all of this were John Brennan, Hillary Clinton, Joe Biden. And uh, uh, when, they, when they went in there trusting the Iranians had, had had bin Laden there waiting for them, SEAL Team 6, your son, they, he was he was retired at that time. Actually. Yes, but but the SEAL Team Six they killed Osama bin Laden's double. How do we know that? One of the wives went running towards them before he shot him and said, "Don't shoot! He's he's a double." I don't know the language she used, and uh, then uh, if you read uh, Cy Hirsch uh, Cy Hirsch's book. Um, he explains that they threw the body parts over the Hindu Kush mountains. They didn't even save them like they saved the sons of Saddam Hussein in, in a refrigerated tent, well-preserved and with makeup, just to prove that they that the wicked witch was dead. They saved the sons of Saddam Hussein. But they did not save the corpse of Osama bin Laden because it was his double. And so, it, could not, it could not handle the scrutiny of DNA testing on the strip. Okay, so the SEAL team, they knew that, that it was thrown out of the helicopter? They learned, that it, they learned that it was not bin Laden. And so they threw the body parts over the Hindu Kush mountains. And, and uh, John Brennan said that the uh, people on the ship were told to keep quiet about the barrel at sea, but they all say that they never were told to keep quiet because there was no barrel at sea. John Brennan took the lead and made the fake media announcements. He lied to the press when he explained this. This Muslim burial at sea, it's, it's actually haram. It's forbidden to bury a Muslim at sea unless, unless the body's going to endanger the lives of the crew with disease risk. You know, you can't, because you see in the ocean, the feet, it'll rotate around and the feet will face Mecca. It's haram. You must bury on land with the face facing Mecca. So Brennan, who, who's a Muslim, you'd think he'd know not to lie about something so obvious. He said it was a Muslim burial at sea. Nonsense. And, uh, so this big lie uh, that you, you see that Biden, Hillary and Clinton worked this agreement with Iran. They trusted Iran to move bin Laden to Pakistan. He did. He was there. But then they trusted Iran to keep him there. They moved him out back to Iran. And then uh, the communication from Iran to Obama was, hey, uh, we got your neck in a noose. Give us a give us all this money, hundred and fifty two billion dollars, two billion on an airplane pallet was paid out for the secrets I wish to reveal now and to the president under the terms of misprision and treason. That is to say, this is a secret 
These are secrets worth $152 billion paid by President Obama. And Vice President Biden paid with the blood of SEAL Team 6 when he had them killed. So it's blackmail and extortion. Then. Blackmail and extortion. Now, do Iran commandeered. Do you have the documents to prove uh, this? Yes. 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 Now, if Iran. Yes, sir. Well, I was going to ask you, if you have those documents, are you willing to personally deliver those to President Trump if he were to provide the transportation and the guarantee of safety for you to do that? Well, I'm not concerned about safety. There's always an invisible hand that protects us, and we're on the winning team. America's on the winning team. Not one sparrow falls to the ground outside of God's will. Uh, I, it would be my pleasure and my honor to bring this material to President Trump. There's a massive amount, terabytes, documents, video, audio. I it needs to go to the president. I, I will do everything that I can to get this video in his hands. It's well, my only wish. Alan, I've got a question for you. Um, so that means that SEAL Team 6 was shot down on purpose after the, the trophy kill to ensure that no dead man can tell no tales. You were correct. So that uh, President Obama paid bribery of $152 million. Vice President Biden paid with the blood of SEAL Team 6. He spent their blood like currency. Well, I've got to I've got to share something with you. Actually, Charles does. Charles, tell him about the Army Ranger that you talked to that was in the city where uh, they were shot down. Okay. Uh, when I we lived in Hawaii, and for about a month afterwards, I was in shock. And my wife and I we went walking on the beach, and in the back of my vehicle, I have a, a bumper sticker about Ty. And this gentleman came up to me, and he was an army ranger that had been injured and he was recuperating in Hawaii. And he said, how do you know Chief Petty Officer Woods? And I says, well, I'm his dad. And he says, well, I worked with your son. And we became very close. It was part of my healing process, actually, getting to know him. Uh, he started coming to our church. His girlfriend started surfing with my daughters, and they ended up getting married. Uh, and one of the things that he told me, he says, I was on the ranger team that was in that village where SEAL Team 6 was killed. The story was by the Biden-Obama administration that uh, there was this team that was under attack in this village, uh, we're going to die if you don't get someone here really quick. And so they loaded SEAL Team 6 on this slow, vintage Huey helicopter the size of a school bus and slowly got them to the village. Now, they did not request help. They'd been in that village numerous times before. In fact, if someone came, it would actually endanger them. The story was not true. And then usually... When a helicopter comes in, it goes zoom right down to the ground, opens up, all the troops go out in seconds, and then boom, the helicopter goes straight up. Well, this was a sitting target, okay, the size of a school bus. It hovered in the air over that village, just waiting to be shot down, and the people hot rope. I've never heard the word hot rope before. That means they each individually lowers down while it was a sitting target. And then apparently it was shot down by one of those weapons that Hillary Clinton illegally sent to Benghazi to give to terrorists, a terrorist organization the U.S. government used to get rid of our ally who yes. was fighting terrorism, that's Gaddafi. One of, one of the and then that, in, that weapon ended up over in Afghanistan. They were Stinger missiles, thousands upon thousands of them went missing and... Mark Turry was told that he's no longer, he had a small arms uh, covert weapons program going, so that way there, none of that was 
ever given to someone because they could shoot down jetliners just flying by if they wanted to. A child could do it and a 12-year-old could do it. So these Stinger missiles went through Benghazi and then were given to the people who shot down SEAL Team 6. That was a setup. They were covering their tracks there. And then when they found the serial number on one of the missiles, it was traced back to the CIA from Qatar, from that weapons cache of Stinger missiles. That's why they had to then cover their tracks after people found out that the missiles were from uh, Qatar and then they could trace back where they came from, from Hillary through Benghazi. That's why Stevens was back there to recover those missiles and, and, and uh, cover up the evidence. Well, that's the least way he was told. Um, you know, I assume that part of the plan for her was to eliminate everyone there at the Benghazi uh, compound as well. You, you know, it's just so wicked. It, it's hard. It, it's just so unimaginably evil what these people do. Dead men don't talk. Well, well, Alan, you we'll, have, we'll talk. We will talk. You have some good news coming up here in the next week and a half. Week, yes, sir. It's going to be released. Uh, audio tapes, documents. Uh, I believe so. Yes, yes. Yeah. yeah. I'm looking forward to hearing about it and uh, seeing seeing everybody connect the dots because it's pretty plain to see the people involved, and it's all connected to another crime spree that and. and that's another story, though. Well, let's just remember that heavy price has been paid for the secrets we are uncovering. And there are millions of people who want to see the truth. And we're going to, we're going to deliver. 